The Wolves were left wounded by the Robin, so perhaps a good time for the Saints to come marching in. I'm George Riley. This is Touchline. Hello again, welcome to Super League Touchline. Remember, Touchline is available uh, every Thursday, so get yourself subscribed and you will never miss us. We're here at Warrington, where the Wolves have a very strong contingent in the New England Elite Training Squad. We'll speak to some of them and the Saints ahead of the big one on Friday. Also coming up, there's this lot. New clubs Gloucester and Hemel make their professional bows in Championship One. Lee Breers and John Wilkin talk live rugby and this weekend's game. We've the top five tries from round five. JJB tells us about the World Cup six book challenge. And we look ahead to the Wolves against Saints on Friday night. Now, Rugby League's newest clubs took to the fields at this weekend at the Prince of Wales Stadium. So we went along to find out how the Stags and the All Golds got on. It's a momentous day, uh, it's history in the making. If you put a rugby ball and a football in front of a, a school kid, they're going to pick up the rugby ball. These boys here love rugby, it's in their blood. Yeah, it's about developing pockets of interest in all aspects of the game and you know this is hopefully just a starting point. There's never been a, a professional club match in, in Cheltenham and in Gloucestershire in, since the game's inception in 1895. I mean. It's a long time coming and uh, we're very, very excited and it's, it's such a passionate feel about it down here that it's, it's, it's great to finally get to this day. Great day for the All Golds, mate. You know, we we got a crowd of just under 400, which is which is a really good turnout for our first game. But uh, team-wise and on the pitch, you know, it was a it was a good wake-up call for for the for the side. You know, they they um, they found out what what life in this division in the pro ranks is, is all about today. We were part of history, playing, being in a semi-professional environment for the first time, but also playing a team that was that was having their first semi-professional game. And I think it's good that the, that the game's expanding. You know, being from Australia, where you know on the east coast, you know, especially, especially Queensland and New South Wales, everywhere rugby league's played by near enough everyone. It's, it's a great sport and a great a great to play and great to, to watch. And and I think the more clubs that can can turn into semi-professional in the in in the south of Sheffield. Um, yeah, area like like us and like Oxford and um, and Gloucester can only be really good for the game. Now this is usually a good old rivalry between two famous old clubs, and these two old heads know that well. Well, disrespecting Warrington wasn't much of a game for Saints because Saints used to put 60, 70 points on them. But we're gradually pulling them back. When we're training and when we're looking at preparing at games, we're, we're sort of pushing the boundary of where the game's going. Even though we didn't set the Duke grand final out, it was a successful season for us. And I would be lying if we didn't want to go back though. So you look at the likes of Warrington and Wigan and these teams, you know, all credit to them, they're probably leading the way at the moment and you know Saints we, we need to play a bit of catch up. We've won the last few 
do, but we're not quite up to the standard we're, we're trying. Uh, but I think that, again, makes for the rivalry to, to be strong. Every game we play against them, there's a full house. I coach under 10s kids now in St. Helens. It was torturous. I couldn't go coaching him because he's damn me. I just see the Warrington flag go up in the window <laughs> only a couple of days before and then it, it's usually left, you know, up if, if they've won. If, 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 if we've had a good result, it's, it's half mast for, yeah. <laughs> for the rest of the day. Right, let's see some tries, shall we? Here's this week's top five. Try five this week scored by Witness at home against Hull FC. Hot with the strength, the power and the offload. Felt with the scrambled finish in the corner. Try number four, St Helens against the Champions Leeds. They didn't do enough of this, but this guy Percival. What an impact he had. It was his break that allowed Melly to scramble past a few Leeds Rhinos and evade the clutches of Callum Watkins. Third best this week, London, who were by far the better team against Salford. Lovely flat pass to send Kieran Dixon clear. And that is why they are so excited about Dixon at London. Incredible pace, great skill and a top, top finish. Try two this week, could have been the top try any other week. Rob Burrow with the dancing toes, he's done that against St Helens before. Eventually bounces off enough tackles to get the ball away. Joel Moon's having some season, he gets clear and the offload with the left hand to Ryan Hall. Try number one though this week comes from the Castleford Tigers at the jungle and a great team try. Rangi Chase getting it going, Jake Webster with some good strength and then the break, Jordan Tanzi the support. Would he go left? No, he shows it to Charlie, gives it back inside and eventually off the knees, the offload and the finish for this week's top try. Now, Jamie Jones Buchanan is a man of many talents. He has a passion for reading, as many of us do. He has a recent degree qualification and he plays for quite a useful rugby league team. We've been to catch up with JJB as he helps to launch the Rugby League World Cup Six Book Challenge at Leeds Central Library. <laughs> Well, I got uh, invited to come along and uh, get involved with it, really, and, and encourage and put a little bit of a face to it. Um, I've always thought I've had a face for radio, but I didn't mind doing it. I'd uh, try and encourage people to get uh, themselves out, pick up a book and start reading again. Uh, and as I've just been saying here, you know, when you ask people whether they're reading or not, especially adults, uh, they say that they love to read, but they never find the time. Uh, and for me, I think reading's a little bit like the diet, you know, when you put food in your mouth. It's nourishment for the for the physical body. I think um, reading can be real nourishment for the mind, and it can help us grow as people. Uh, and we need to find time to, um, to to sit down and read a book, and helps us develop it. And I just think it helps us pass on better knowledge to the uh, younger generation. It's a scheme we run at the reading agency to encourage anybody to get back into reading. It might be people who haven't read since school or people who've really struggled with reading and we encourage them to read six books or it can be six anything, it can be six magazine articles, six poems and they get a certificate at the end of that. We're now linking with the Rugby League World Cup because we know there's such interest in Rugby League this year and so we're encouraging people who are rugby league fans to get into reading. I mentioned that it's been no secret in 2011, uh, the Rudyard Kipling poem If, uh, it helped to inspire and was a big catalyst for us as Leeds lads to crack on even though we'd had a really unfortunate sort of regular round season. Uh, even though we finished fifth, uh, that poem really just taught us that it's all about the journey and all you can do is keep turning up each week and keep trying to grow regardless of where you are and it paid dividends for us.
We're here today at Leeds Libraries where people can sign up for the Six Foot Challenge, but actually other libraries across Yorkshire, the Humber and the North West are going to be running the Six Foot Challenge as well. So really they just need to go and ask in their library and the library will find out for them, but ideally they can sign up there and then to the Six Foot Challenge. Both the Wolves and Saints will be keen to right the wrongs of bruising defeats in round five. And when these two sides meet, it's normally extraordinary. Yeah, the, the playoff games were, were massive games, especially the semi-final. Um, I remember that one, and you know the atmosphere was was electric, and just the buzz, you know, from from minute one to, to the last minute was unbelievable. It's uh, one of those games that you kind of enjoy. Um, I see our fans always travelling really good numbers there, and always really loud, and as are the Warrington home support. So yeah, it's always uh, one of those you know cracking local derbies. I think they're going to be confident, you know, coming to to an away game like I said, at Warrington and where they got two wins here last year. I think uh, it was early May, uh, April rather, than just before Easter. You know, we've got a really good win there, and and then our first playoff game, um, you know, going uh, going there as well and getting a really good result and then fantastic performance again as well. So you know, we've got a pretty good record at Hallowell Jones. So hopefully, we can keep it up. We're both in the same boat this week. We're, we're both coming off disappointing losses, which you know we probably wouldn't have expected. Um, you know, it's, it's a derby game, it's a massive game and like I say, when the, these two sides meet it's always quite a spectacular occasion and you know, both teams are going to be looking to get the season on track with, with a win on Friday. I've been lucky enough to be here and win a lot of trophies and win a lot of things so you know, it's an unbelievable feeling to win those and achieve those, and achieve those things so you know, we'll be looking to kick on and get some silver by the end of the season. You know, as, as Leeds have proved over the last couple of seasons, it's not where you start, it's where you finish so you know, hopefully we'll be uh, somewhere in the area when Blair Old Trafford come the end of the year. Right, let's continue our build-up to the big one, Warrington against St Helens Friday night. Speak to the Wolves coach, Tony Smith. Tony, how's your week been off the back of a, a defeat last week? Yeah, a bit indifferent. We're, you know, we'd like to have better form than, than what we're bringing into this uh, game, but I think everybody's a little bit like that, and Saints could probably say the same thing. But uh, we'll be looking for form this week. Um, we'll need it because they're, uh, they're a quality team that we're playing. But I'll, um, yeah, we were a bit indifferent at whole KR and uh, you know, our opponents were able to lift and come home strong and, and we just didn't quite do that so yeah, we'll have to uh, yeah, lift it a level or two. And given what you've said about your team's form this year, how proud and pleased are you to have so many in the, the elite England training squad? Yeah, it's been good. Um, yeah, it's always nice to have recognition of, you know, and I suppose some of that recognition is of last year as well and in terms of our selection. Uh, some of those players are, you know, in, in good form again this year. But I, I, it's so early on in the year; it's hard to gauge on exactly on this year's form. As you know, I think um, it's right for um, Steve to stick by the players pretty much that he had for the back end of last year and the program that he's running out there with. But you know, they're still they're still available for some more players to push into that squad by the end of the year. And you know, we. We've got a few involved this in this you know uh, period, but I'd like to think we'll have even more by the end of the year, which will be recognition of our form by then. A word on Stefan Ratchford. Speaking to him a little earlier, he's one of those of your players in there. Does he need to have a, a regular starting position for you to be a to be a, a feature for for Steve in the England squad? Because you use him in a variety of positions. I would like to think not. Uh, I think most coaches uh, recognise versatility is a real asset and I think Steph does too and you know I think uh, his ability to play either in the halves or at fullback or you know in the centres is makes him even more valuable to to representative teams I think uh, it's hard to you know necessarily carry specialists in each of those positions uh, so it also helps that somebody can adapt to or, or you know go to a different position at it certainly makes their their worth to the team greater, I think. And uh, well, what, what did you buy when you bought 
Steph from from Salford. What did you what did you buy him as? Did you buy him as a six, a one, a three, a four, or just a very talented young player? Yeah, we didn't buy Steph from Salford. Uh, Steph came to us. Um, he was off contract, and Steph was desperate to come to our club. So um, he wasn't somebody that we went out when and you bought. acquired him. Yeah. Uh, when he came to us and uh, and wanted to come to our club, and that's what we're able to do nowadays. Um, you know, players are wanting to come, which is a fantastic place to be, rather than having to go and um, you know try and change their minds or uh, in other ways. Uh, what did he come as? Um, he came as a good rugby league player that will you know be in our squad and team most most weeks um, in some capacity. He, he's uh, Comfortable in in either one of those halves or, or fullback area, which you know there's not much difference nowadays. Um, and most fullbacks are, are have some skill of the of a halfback. They need that, um, or you know our fullbacks uh, have got some speed and some agility of our of our halfbacks and vice versa. It's you know it's it's they they're quite often uh, interchangeable and do um, in many facets of the play. Some some people are better suited to returning the ball than others, but uh, um, Steph can fit that category e equally as well as, as just about anybody in the game. So he's got all the assets to be a successful halfback or fullback, and you know can fill in at centre and do a, a more than good job in that area too. And he says he's he's loving learning off the best there is in the likes of the, the old boys Breers and Hodgson. A, a word on. Saints, Tony, what have you made uh, of their start to the season under their new coach, Nathan Brown? Yeah, similar to most of us. Uh, you know, they're probably not wholly and solely satisfied with all their form. Um, they've had some better weeks than others. And, you know, their last week performance, they, they're probably disappointed in some areas. Although, you know, they, were, they had three tries each uh, against their opponents. And, you know, probably just a bit off in some areas. And... Uh, you know, take some time, like everybody else. I wouldn't be panicking about Saints and you know, or anybody that's not in top form at this stage of the year. Uh, come Easter and after Easter, usually sorts out most of the teams. Um, there usually starts to become a bit of a split in the competition, and you start to see the the depth of some of the bigger squads. And you know, they've they've been tested in terms of injuries themselves so far this year. And as you mentioned, a new coach and takes a little bit of time to adapt to that but um, Saints will be you know they'll be one of the strong teams by the end of the year I've got no doubt about that and you know we're expecting a, a really strong performance from them this week and they've got some talented players right across the park whether they're experienced or whether they're some of their young talent that they bring through they're, they're a good team. Well, it's unusual. I hope it's a cracking contest. We wish you well, of course, Tony. Great to see you uh, this week. That's uh, Tony Smith. That's it for Touchline this week. All the reaction, of course, to the weekend's action up on the Super League website early next week. And we'll see you with Touchline a little later on next week.